Hello, everyone, and welcome. We have a great group here today. We have people joining us from all across the country and from all different types of libraries, academic institutions and colleges, public libraries, schools. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us here on our session on getting to know our resource, Black Life in America. We are at the top of the hour, so let's get started. Just a few housekeeping notes. I uh, wanted to let you know that our session is being recorded and we will send out a copy to everyone following the session. My name is Katherine Bergerson. I am the Vice President of Marketing at NewsBank. I'll be joined today by my colleague, Jim Draper. It's our goal in the next 40 to 45 minutes to share with you an overview of this rich collection, what it includes and what really makes Black life in America unique. We'll show you how to search and pinpoint the information that's most relevant to your area of interest. And we'll share some ideas about how to build visibility, help get people into the resource, including ideas to build um, Black Life in America into your Black History Month programs coming up in February. I know some people are, are planning already. We have time for your questions. Thanks to those of you who submitted them in advance. We will do our best to get to all of them. If you think of something uh, during the presentation, though, please don't hesitate. Use that gray question bar, type it in there, and again, we will do our best to get to all of them and respect uh, your time. So if that sounds good to everyone, we'll dive right in. Just want to share a brief background on NewsBank. We are a leading news and information provider to research institutions, public libraries, schools, and more all around the world. And I'm so proud to share with you that this month, this year, is our company's 50th anniversary. We're so proud of that. We aggregate news sources from all around the world to bring you, your patrons, faculty, students, staff, credible, vetted news and information, many of which are unique to NewsBank, and all are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week from any device. So today, as you know, we're focusing on Black life in America. And to show us around this incredible resource is my colleague, Jim Draper. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Catherine, very much. I appreciate it. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, everybody. I'm really, really happy to be with you today. Uh, to spend a few minutes telling you about Black Life in America and the richness of the product. It's different from anything you've seen before, and I want you to get the best possible value you can. So I'm going to point out a lot of things that are kind of cool about the product and help you understand what's inside it. So I'm going to go to a quick slide deck and then do some live demo. And I'm going to show my screen now. There we go. Okay. And I hope you can see a slide now that says Black Life in America. We can, thank you. Okay, good. Well, again, I'm delighted to spend some time with everybody. Uh, this product is still very new. It was released only last year, but I'm very happy to say that customers and users especially have offered it really, really great acceptance. And I think there are a lot of reasons for that. And I'd like to highlight those as we go through our discussion today. Uh, I have a few slides, and as I mentioned before, I'm going to do live demo as well. Uh, in the live demo, I'll show you the depth of the product and some of the tools that are very useful for students and researchers, uh, for public library patrons. Um, all of them tell us that they're finding them very valuable. So what are we going to do together? Uh, over the next 10, 15 minutes uh, among us, uh, with me here, we're going to talk about the mission of Black Life in America, uh, why we did it, what the purpose is, uh, overview of the content inside. This is far and away the greatest collection, largest and deepest and richest collection of primary sources about African-American and black history in America ever assembled. Uh, I'll also help you understand what makes black life in America unique. And as I mentioned a moment ago, I'll do a live demonstration. And I'll, if I have time, I'm going to address a couple of your excellent questions that you sent in in advance, which I appreciate very, very much. So I said a moment ago that BLA is unique. It is. It's entirely groundbreaking. Uh, nothing like this product has ever been built before, and that's because only NewsBank and Redex, which is our partner uh, company, 
uh, could build a collection of this type because it requires so, so many primary sources covering such a long story. So what does it do? It tells the story of African-Americans from the very beginning to today and uniquely to tomorrow. In essence, it is a collection of primary sources that refreshes itself, renews itself with new content every day. And that's because Newsbank has so many agreements with news publishers to bring content into this collection. How much is there in there? How much content? I love this number and I put it in red because it astonishes people, even me. There are more than 100 million individual primary sources. And as I mentioned a moment ago, they are refreshed and renewed every day. And of course, the focus here is news. And news is a great focus to have when you're telling a historical story because everything gets covered in the news in one respect or another, often very much in the moment or upon reflection or with essays later on. And news is a various thing. It has all kinds of formats. Looking back in time, it was only newspapers, print papers, as you all probably understand. But today we capture all kinds of news, blogs and videos, audios, news transcripts, editorials, retrospectives of different types, podcasts, you name it. All of this falls under the large banner of news. So that's among the kind of content you will find inside this collection. Another thing that makes it very unique, Black Life in America, is how local the sources can be. Because of Newsbanks and Redex's very, very deep collection of news content, I can tell you that your town, your region, wherever you are, wherever you are even in the world, will have strong coverage. And by strong coverage, I mean coverage from that place or a place very near to it, where the news is created, generated, and published. There is hardly ever an exception to this. And in my mind, this makes the product very, very unique and in that sense, groundbreaking as well. Uh, bottom line, no other publisher could build anything like this. And that is why our mission was to create this product because we could and we knew there was such an interest in the subject matter of African-American history and the story of blacks in America. So what's inside this, this product? What's inside this resource? Uh, first, there are hundreds of historical African-American newspapers from the earliest times, and that's going back to the 18th century, to the recent past. And by historical, I mean papers that existed in a certain time and then no longer existed. They became defunct. They're not being published any longer. That's often the case with many papers. We have hundreds of these, and I won't give you comparative statistics, but it is uh, an, uh, an unassailable number. It's no one else has anything like it. We also have over 100 current African-American news sources, and there's a distinction. We have historical content going way, way back, and we have current content from African-American news sources that's very, very recent and populates even into tomorrow. But beyond this, we have 19,000, that's another number that astonishes me, other news sources, and not just from the United States, but from around the world, and not just from the United States as we know it today, but from America before it was the United States. And many of these have deep back files, meaning they go very, very far back in time. All of this makes the product unique. Uh, there's nothing else like it. And it also allows us to pull into one place the entire story of African-Americans. And by story of African-Americans, I don't mean just landmark legislation or the familiar kinds of historical events you may be aware of. We tell the story of everyday people. We tell the story of pop stars who are current, we tell the story of sports stars who are current, of legislators, of Supreme Court justices, whatever it happens to be, of every type of person who has been covered in the news. And to make this discoverable, to make it easy to find the content, we've developed some user tools that I'll show you in the live demo. These were essential because while this is a research database of the highest order with content that is very, very deep, as you will see, some users need access points that make it simpler to discover what they care about most. So we created a tool that makes that happen very rapidly. It looks like this, and I'm gonna show you how this works in just a moment, but this is a sneak preview of something we call suggested searches, and it is the best avenue for accessing the content in this collection. So you are all 
librarians representing a community of users who need information and resources of many kinds. Well, I can assure you that this one is an unassailable one for either casual study, whether you're just getting to know the story of African Americans, or whether you are a deep researcher at the highest university level. All of the content here serves all of those different users. And that's why we can call it confidently the broadest and the deepest and the most comprehensive resource ever developed covering African Americans. And that's why we're seeing already that this has become a cornerstone product for librarians and institutions uh, because it supports every aspect of African American culture and history. We also created, as you're going to see, a great experience for users. So what I'd like to do is jump into an actual live demo, show you how the product works, give you a few background points on why we built it the way we did, and then we'll take some questions. So I'm going to turn off my camera so you can't see me. So the screen is a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna move into a different spot here. And I hope now you can see a screen that says Black Life in America. We've got it. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So what you're looking at, everybody, is the homepage of Black Life in America. And I'm opening here because I want to show you something very important. Look at the subtitle of this product, The Experience and Impact of African Americans as Recorded by the News Media. We mean this. This is not, as I mentioned earlier, a product that simply captures landmark legislation or the 100 most important events in African-American history. It has coverage of everything, and you'll see that in just a moment. And when you work with the product, as I know many of you have done, you'll see how true that is. This product focuses as much on the contributions and experiences in everyday life and impact of African-Americans as it does on traditional history. And you, if you could see me, you would see I'm using air quotes there, traditional history. I mentioned sports stars, but there are authors and artists, uh, musicians, uh, famous people from every walk of life as represented here. So a very, very rich collection in that sense. And I wanted to point that out because that's why we call it a product, a resource covering the experience and impact of African-Americans. So you're seeing the homepage right now. I'm going to jump to that tool I mentioned a moment ago. I use this button here, jump to suggested searches. Bang, there I go and I am at this tool that I'm going to demonstrate in just a moment for you. But I wanted to point that out to make sure that you and your patrons and the users you serve understand that all of this is on the home page. You can jump down or you can scroll down. First though, I wanna show you a little bit about the content itself and some of the navigation. So I'm going to do what we call an open search. I didn't put anything in the search box here, you can see, and I click search and here we are. I have pulled up the entire content set. And you see it is now 101 million items. It's actually growing uh, every month by nearly a million, which astonishes me. So here I am. Here's the, I've seen the home page. Here we are now looking at the results page, but populated with all of the content in the product. 101 million results. Brief preview of some of the navigators we have. You can navigate by source name, by year. You can navigate by the type of source. You'll recall I mentioned a moment ago all the different kinds of news we have here, a, a big variety, by language, by type of article, by era. You can see these flying past you, the different kinds of content we have by era and by presidential era for the United States. But let me show you a couple things first. I'm gonna go back to the oldest content And I'm going to do a filter, a navigation. Here you can see the old content lighting up. Look at this from 1704, the Boston Newsletter. We'll look at that in just a moment. What I want to show you, though, is the range of sources, because this is very, very important. You see here source name. Well, you see 1.5 million items of content from Miami Herald. Here's what you see from the Times Picayune. But here's where it gets kind of astonishing. That's where you see the 19,000 sources plus that we have. I'm not gonna open that right now, don't have time, unfortunately, but you can do that, of course, to see how richly represented your neighborhood or region happens to be. And here's source location. This I am going to open up. Here you see a navigator pane, we call this a modal. I'm going to just, by way of example, search on one state in the United States, and I'm gonna make it Georgia. And here you go. I hope you saw how I did that. 
You can see 3.4 million items from Georgia. I'm going to tell the machine, call those up. I applied this. Okay, now we're seeing all of the content from every news source in Georgia, beginning here, as you can see, in 1763. What I want to do is filter on just a small time range, 1970 to 1980. And I could do this for any decade or any uh, collection of decades. I'm now applying that date range to create a particular filter. So I'm looking only at content from Georgia, only at content from 1970 to 1980. Again, kind of astonishing, 235,000 nearly uh, individual items. But here's what I want to show you. Look at the variety of papers we have. Atlanta Journal here, scroll down a little bit more, and you're going to find the Augusta papers. Augusta Chronicle here, go to the next page. Augusta Chronicle, and it goes on and on and on. Here's a Columbus Inquirer, the Daily Inquirer of Columbus. The point is, we have rich, deep coverage going way, way, way back for this one state and for all the states because of the extent of news assets that we have brought into this product. I'm going to go back to the home page. Do this one one more time. Open up the content. There we go. And I also want to show you one other option here. Content from Africa, Asia, Australia, Caribbean, Central America. This resource isn't just based on content created in the United States or in America as we traditionally understand it. All of the perspectives you see here from Europe, from Africa, are about the African-American experience. And what's fascinating and discoverable in this product is how world commentary has reflected upon the achievements and the impact of African-Americans a unique perspective. So I'm going to go back to the home page and I'm going to take you through a little tour of the suggested searches, which you see here. And again, you can reach those from the home page either by scrolling or by clipping, click, uh, clicking on the jump to button that you saw there just a moment ago. So what are these suggested searches? Um, I imagine a number of you have had a chance to play with the product and use it in your daily work or in helping patrons. Uh, but in case you haven't seen this yet, these suggested searches are, in essence, pathways of discovery for students and for scholars and for people of all interests and abilities. What we've done here is create a schematic of African-American history. All of the major events and many, many of the events that are not yet considered major. We did enormous research over the course of a year and mapped out the entire spectrum of African-American history and made sure that it was represented in these paths of discovery that we call suggested searches. Now, there are many hundreds of these paths. You may be getting that sense from what I'm showing you just here. Many hundreds of these paths. I don't have time to show you everything today, but what I can show you is four or five to give you a sense of how the product works from the patron or user point of view, but also a sense of how it can be used to create programs or to do Black History Month presentations, or whatever may fit with your needs in your particular institution. So what I'd like to do is start with this one, Arrival in America. This is the time period up to 1783, uh, when African Americans were often, not always, but often uh, enslaved people. And I'll show you how we have handled that. The story of the earliest time period, obviously covered by the news, but we have news coverage of all of these things here, curfew, non-importation agreements, et cetera. I wanna focus though on this one, the human cargo, meaning of course, the slaves being brought from Africa or elsewhere uh, for use and in commerce in the Americas at the time. So what I've done is go from this, arrival in America, I've selected this particular subcategory called the human cargo, many others I could have selected, and we're going to look right now at children for sale which is a rather frightening concept. But I want to show you what this content looks like. Here you see 1,500, nearly 1,500 results 
covering the subject of children for sale. And of course, these are mostly advertisements from early newspapers. And you see here from 1748, a Negro girl to be sold. You see here a Negro woman to be sold and she needs to be able to wash and iron very well. I'll just open up one of these to give you a sense of what they look like. And of course, you're looking at a very, very old newspaper, this one from 1752. I won't go through all the user tools here, don't have time today, but here you see from an advertisement in the New York Gazette, this is New York, a likely Negro boy about 10 years of age is to be sold, inquire of the printer hereof, which is a fairly common kind of convention. I'll go back one row here and give you a sense of the tool, the power of this tool you see here. Here you see the actual search across the database that generated the results under children for sale. All of this can be modified. Your users, whether they're sophisticated users or not, can simply change these fields, for example, change that date and expand or shrink a search. We, we are very, very uh, pleased to reveal this search as well to users so they can understand how they got to it. Because for the most part, when we created these searches, which is an editorial process, we intended to make them fairly narrow so they wouldn't overwhelm with content like a fire hose. But a user can expand his interest in search by changing these fields. Now, if he or she doesn't care about that, that's fine. You can just hide it all and it goes away as you're seeing right there. So I'm gonna show you a couple more of these suggested searches to give you a sense of the time scale covered here. And again, I'm gonna use this word richness of the entire product. So here's the antebellum period. This is a period where news coverage of African-Americans expanded, which is not surprising. Uh, African-Americans becoming more engaged in news type events. Uh, here we begin to see activist groups and protest movements emerging, and you can see those there. Many court decisions emerging, Dred Scott there. Many, many others that are probably less familiar. Matters of education. Here's the one I want to show. Uh, the Institution of Slavery. This is an astonishing collection of content covering everyday life in slave times in the South. And I'm gonna give you one example just to give you a sense of what this looks like, runaway slaves. And think of the teaching moments you see here, not just the learning moments, but the teaching moments. You can approach the subject through any one of these suggested searches and provoke all kinds of discussion and discovery. So in this case, we have 112,000 results. There are actually more that you could generate by expanding this search in various ways. But here you see all of these cases. Here it is by best match. I'm gonna to go to oldest very quickly to show you how this all began. And there we are in 1788, these advertisements and essays and arguments and editorials about runaway slaves. Nothing else like it. Fascinating to users. I work with customers almost every day and they tell me that they are greatly surprised by the range here and also by the stories being told. So a couple more. Looking down into the current time, let's look at the civil rights movement and get a sense of what is to be discovered there. Uh, let's look at education. And I hope by now everyone is seeing that we have these main topics that are kind of the skeleton, subheads, subtopics, and then particular topics under them. So education, uh, civil rights time, how about the Little Rock Nine? Probably familiar to most of the guests today on the call. Here we've done a very, very tight search, just 1957 and just under Little Rock Nine. Now, of course, there's commentary going on in the news even today about this event from 1957, I could pull that up by changing these dates. But in this case, to introduce the new user to the matters about the Little Rock Nine, here's how we've decided to construct it. And of course, you can take all of this content and search it by location. Well, what did Texas think about this? Well, what did Michigan think about this? What did foreign language papers think about this? Every kind of prism, and that's because the content set is so large but here we're making it narrower and narrower so it can be worked with more effectively by every kind of user. So I'm gonna do just two more and then we'll be finished with my live demo.
One of them is to answer a question we had from the group, which I thought was terrific. And the other is just to introduce you to the uh, more current content. This is from the early 21st century. Reminder how far back in history this goes. Let's take a look at literature in the arts. I mentioned earlier that the resource doesn't just cover the 100 most important events in African-American history or the landmark legislation. It covers everything, absolutely everything. And you can see that here. Let's just open up Black Panther, a movie. 680 results. We intentionally limited this to, well, I let that go, to the year 2018. Uh, it could be expanded to see what people are saying about the movie Black Panther today. All kinds of tools in here to make that possible. And I can't show you everything today, not enough time, but play around with it. And in half an hour, 45 minutes, you'll really get comfortable with this. So that I would advise. So last thing I want to show you is to answer a question. In fact, we got the same question from several of the visitors on the call today. And that was, do you have coverage of the East St. Louis riots of 1917? And the answer is, yes, we do. And I'll show you how we do it. It's covered under this period, Jim Crow. It's covered under the very logical heading of unrest and acts of violence. And there it is. I'm going to open it up. East St. Louis race riots. And here we have limited the search to this time period. Uh, the, this event is still being discussed, so you could pull up much more current content if you wish to do it. But here you get a sense of the breadth of the coverage of this event that we have in the resource. Uh, this is on the scene reporting, as you can see. This is the broad axe from Chicago. Here is the Belleville New Democrat from Belleville, Illinois. San Antonio Light from Texas. Here is Pueblo, Colorado. Here is Hot Springs, Arkansas. Here is the New York Age, a very famous paper uh, from New York, of course. Here is the San Antonio Express. Here is the Daily Illinois State Register, Evansville Courier. I could go on and on and on, as you can see, it, because there is so much. Uh, to study here. So I'm going to end my uh, demo at this point because time doesn't permit too much more. Uh, we'll take some questions, I think, in just a moment. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I can figure that out. There we go. And I'm going to reappear if I do this right. Did I? Okay. All right, Jim. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Well, thank, thank you, everyone, for your patience on that. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's interesting that. Um, the questions about East St. Louis came in from uh, school districts, also from public libraries. So we're very grateful for those questions and we have several others. So let's see, um, can the database be searched on the basis of a state to receive state-specific state information? Yeah, absolutely. The, just a moment ago, I gave a sense of how you can do that with Georgia. You can do that with any state and you can narrow down further once you're in once you've made your first selection. Or you could say, I want to see coverage from Australia. You can do it by any defined geographical region. But if you're a customer who is in Illinois and you want to study what the Chicago papers were doing or elsewhere in Illinois, the answer is absolutely yes, as you saw in that left hand navigator on the results list. And thank you. Um, how do we look for articles or videos highlighting uh, current Black achievements? Uh, two ways. The, uh, you, you saw just a moment ago in the suggested searches that many of these we call out because we have an editorial team that watches this and understands when an important achievement has been uh, arrived at we will create a suggested search. So that's probably the best path in. Um, the other path is to do a standard search, open up either advanced search and put in the basic criteria and refine from there forward. Uh, the important thing to know is that because the coverage is so broad, you will find what you're looking for. Uh, so you can take either path depending on where you're comfortable. So that's the best way to do it. And of course, if you want to limit the time period that you're going to explore, you can do that as well using the 
the either the navigator on the results list, as you saw, or using in an advanced search, you can limit it right up front. I want to look at something concerning, for example, um, African American movies from nine, let's say 2017. You can do that readily from from that place. Very nice. Thank you. Thank uh, you. A question um, from Phil, who says, when a time period is chosen from the selected searches, is that a filter for the publication date, or does it find uh, information about that time period? Excellent question. It is a filter on the publication date. Uh, Phil, I think that was. That's a great question. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, those dates correspond to the publication dates of the news item itself. Uh, and I'll give you a great example of why your question was so good. I demonstrated a moment ago Little Rock Nine from, I think, 1957 that was. Well, you can get all kinds of coverage of the Little Rock Nine in the more recent module of the suggested searches, meaning the, from the 21st century, because we offer retrospective coverage there as well, because on the 50th anniversary, lots of people wrote essays about this and tried to understand the event and reinterpret it. So absolutely, uh, great question. The dates that are in the suggested searches are the dates of initial publication, not of the event. And a question about students. Can students, if they download an article, can they um, post them um, to perhaps a personal website or an educational website? Yes, there are there are restrictions on use in the license itself, of course, but uh, this use would not be of concern to us. Yeah, and that's a great thing for students to do to post their favorites, and you know they can post links if your if the other students happen to have a uh, access to the product, or they can forward uh, to anyone, and he or she can look at it even without that uh, license. So lots of ways to do that and make it project based. Excellent. Thank you. I think we have, we have time for one more. And to anyone that we don't get to today, we, we will get back to you in, in the very near future. Um, but I, here's a good one, Jim. Some examples of types of community groups that libraries can partner with for programming on this topic. Examples of community groups? Yeah, I'm thinking like perhaps local NAACP chapters. Oh, or and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Catherine, I couldn't hear you uh, completely uh, a moment ago. Oh, absolutely. All kinds of interest groups and communities can find uh, a bond really by working with this content together because they're going to find their own stories. There. And the example of the NAACP is fantastic. Um, the entire history of the NAACP from every perspective is covered here. So if the NAACP wants to uh, partner with the library to share its story about its development in that town, the content is highly likely. I can never guarantee anything, but the content is highly likely to cover that uh, because that kind of question comes up all the time and all of our customers have said, hey, it's really working for us. So that's a great example of an interest group that you could partner with. And of course, if you're doing a public library event, bringing in these interest groups uh, or advocacy groups can really, really help uh, drive uh, traffic. Again, thank you, Jim, for the wonderful um, background on, on how the collection was created and how to use it. And now that we know how to pinpoint that information, I'd love to share with you some examples of how you can use it in your programming and really engage your, your patrons and students and faculty. So again, thank you, Jim. If you wouldn't mind sticking around, if more questions come in, we'll, we'll get to them. I'll be here. Thank you. Time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And we did have a question about, I'm looking for uh, ideas to promote the materials in our databases. So great segue. Thank you. Save that for this one. Um, again, yes. So with Black History Month coming up after the holidays, yeah, this is an opportunity for you to really start putting your plans together either now or, or save this presentation and, and at the first of the year when you come back, we've got top five ways to engage your users. And they're also, they are in the handout section. You can download this information right now um, and you can cut and paste them or customize them for your library. So if you look at those gray bars where it says handouts, it says two, I believe. 
Um, we've got the PowerPoint presentation and these top five ready to use engagement strategies. So number one, get it in the news. Submit a press release, um, particularly this works well, I think, for public libraries, um, to your community newspaper about the library's resource, that you have Black Life in America. You can use Black History Month as the lead or reintroduce the resource to your community. And I really encourage even submitting it to local TV stations. They often, maybe they won't cover it on the air, but they're looking for additional content to put on social media or their community calendars and events. So definitely include uh, not only newspapers, but TV stations in when you send out press releases. Now, if, for academic institutions and, and schools, we really recommend a write-up in your institution's newsletter. We have a sample of an internal newsletter um, article that you can use in graphics. There's a template in that, uh, the document that I just mentioned, you can download it there. Also, um, a blog. If you write a blog, that's you can reuse it, send it out to your group, post it on your website, post it on your social media channels, and also near the database itself so that people can get that extra information. Number two, building up your web presence. This is the perfect time to feature Black Life in America on your website's homepage. Um, if you do a featured resource of the month, or did you know, or you're building a, a section specifically for uh, Black History Month programs, this is the time to add it. And again, we have graphics for you, we have brief product descriptions. Um, here you can see several examples from customers, how they're using it um, outside of, of Black History Month, just um, every day. Michigan State has it listed in their ethnic studies section. Contra Costa has a newspaper section. And then Charlotte Melbourne Library, I really, I love this example. They created a blog and they posted it within their digital resources section. And it really draws that, as I mentioned about blog, a, additional attention to the, not only the rich content in the research, but there is um, just so much information that you can glean I use this as an example, again, it's in, in the handout section. I encourage you to take a look and see, see how they used it. And of course, the, the, the more places you can add it, the more likely it is that people will discover it. Number three, say it on social or newsletter nuggets. Uh, they can be used in both ways. Uh, we have ready to use social media posts and graphics again to let people know about the resource and how to access it. Uh, of several examples. Again, here are some customers from Arizona State University, Richmond Public Libraries, and others. They used some of the graphics and portions of the descriptions, but they made it their own and uh, made it their own for their community and their patrons and their students. So we welcome that creativity. Please um, feel free to, again, use what we have as an example, um, but make it your own. And a, a tip for this, so these are kind of, these are briefer, briefer than, than an article. So they're great for social media, or if you have an e-newsletter, I call them newsletter nuggets. Just copy and paste, you can pop them in. And um, an extra tip here, add the hashtag Black History Month, and that will increase your visibility in other social media feeds um, that are also talking about this, the same conversations. Or video views. Video is the number one way to engage. And we have two brief videos, which are less than two minutes. One is an overview video that shows the rich content and to get people excited to utilize Black Life in America. And the second is then how to search. And it's more, more of a functional video. Um, but again, less than two minutes and they're available. We encourage you to download them add links to your website, your own YouTube channel, um, put it in the, the database near the resource so it's easy for people to, to find it and access it you know, where they are at the time. Also, oh, if you're a customer of Niche Academy, NewsBank also has um, an academy within Niche Academy. These videos are there too, so you can easily link to those if you're um, part of Niche Academy. And number five, Post a hands-on training. 
So as part of your Black History Month programs, you could add a training session just like we did here today on getting to know the Black Life in America resource. We can invite people into the library uh, or host it virtually. Some of our customers say they ask people to actually bring their own devices in their iPad or the laptop and really help them navigate on the device that they're most comfortable with. And then they're able to bookmark it and access the resource um, when they're at home. So, you know, come up with some creative ideas to get them searching and engaged that historical information with images or notable people or facts about, about your college or your community always uh, get people excited. And, and once they start digging in, uh, they're, they're hooked. And feel free to use Jim's demonstration. Um, pull from it, make it your own. We'll send um, a copy of it in the email uh, tomorrow. So those are my top five ready to use ideas, but I do have a few bonus ones, not quite as ready to use, but I feel like these are, are some ways you can really help supplement your programs or your um, assignments using Black Life in America. If you're hosting a film or an art exhibit or an author, pull an article about the, the author or some interesting facts with additional background to include either in your promotions to help get people excited about it or to read prior to the event. Or at the event, they make a great handout. And what many customers tell us is that, that patrons and students really like uh, the, that it makes the experience even more valuable um, to provide context and a more well-rounded experience. Um, you could utilize articles from the database to compare and contrast an issue. You could see how it's an, an issue is covered in one part of the United States or one part of the world versus another. Um, or compare and contrast how an issue is covered over time and see how language changes. And um, it, that can be a, a very useful um, thing for, for classrooms and, and learning. We hear that it really helps students understand how the, the past informs the present or how different perspectives um, exist throughout the world. Also create your own social media posts or little newsletter articles. If there is a significant event in your town's history or famous people or you know, whatever TikTok, you can find an article, pull it and share it on your social media or in your, your um, newsletter. As someone asked about student web pages, it's a great way um, to encourage people to start digging into Black Life in America and to say, hey, there's more articles like that in this resource, check them out. So those are my top five ideas and some bonuses. Again, they're all in the handout section. Please download them now, make them your own. And I'd like to show you one more quick thing. I know we're, we're, we're getting short on time here, but well, the ideas for engagement strategies today were really built around Black History Month, you can use them anytime. And we have marketing resource centers at newsbank.com. They're tailored for public libraries, academic libraries, schools, community colleges, and all of the ideas I shared and even more bookmarks you can print out, handouts, other options are all in our marketing resource center. And I always say, you know, if you maybe aren't the communications or marketing person for your institution or library, send them this page or send them this presentation. As a marketing person, I could tell you that I always like to get new ideas, particularly content that is really ready to use. So please don't hesitate to reach out to your colleagues and please share this with them. Thank you again. We're, we have, we're, over our time, but I, I love to have these, these questions. It's great. Jim, thank you again so much. Thank you. Thank you to all of you who spent part of your day with us. Um, as you exit, a quick three-question survey will pop up. Please let us know what you thought about today's session and how we can improve in the future. So on behalf of the News Bank team, we are grateful for you and thank you for spending part of your day with us. And let us know your success stories on how you use Black Life in America in your, in your programming in February. Yes. Thank Have you, everybody. Day. Bye. Bye.